وَالْحِيْتَانَ فِي الْبِحَارِ Even the wild animals in the desert and even the fish in the sea will cry for you. لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم فاستجاب لكم ربكم أني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم من ذكر أو أنثى بعضكم من بعض فالذين هاجروا وأخرجوا من ديارهم وعودوا في سبيلي وقاتلوا وقتلوا لأكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ولأدخلنهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ثوابا من عند الله والله عنده حسن الثواب أطلع صلى الله على محمد وآله محمد اللهم صل على محمد When mentioning the story of the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which we touched on briefly in one of the past nights, when Rasulullah left Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Mecca, and Amir al-Mu'mineen had a great task of placing himself on the bed of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to be a depot so that the mushrikeen can think that that is Rasulullah himself sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and in the meanwhile Rasulullah could migrate from Mecca to Medina so Amir al-Mu'mineen did a great favor to all of humanity because if it wasn't for Imam Ali alayhi salam Rasulullah would not have been preserved and if Rasulullah is not preserved it means what? it means that is the end of Islam so all the Muslims today that we have, and Islam as a whole, was preserved for humanity because of this great man. So Allah descended the verse, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْلِ نَفْسَهُ اِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Some people, they sell themselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the mushrikeen saw this act by Amir al-Mu'mineen, they were amazed. Now what is this religion? Abu Sufyan says, who are we fighting? I mean, in the end, when it's up, to, it's up to saving my life or saving your life, everyone says, Anna, I want to save my life. But seeing sacrifice to that extent where a person will sacrifice himself just for the sake of the other person. Where Imam Ali salam has one worry. He tells me, Ya Rasulullah, that I'll stay in, in the bed, no problem, meaning his words. But I have a condition, which is what? Are you going to be saved? Are you going to be saved? And when he knows that Rasulullah is going to be saved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what Amir ibn alayhi wa sallam is what is completely satisfied and happy. However, Amir ibn alayhi wa sallam had another task. He is the man of tasks. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam left him with the task of what? Of bringing al-fawatim. You see, I don't know if there's anything more precious in this world than, your, than a man's own daughter. Right? Than a man's own daughter. This is why when somebody comes up to uh, ask for your daughter's hands, you make sure, usually the father makes sure this person is a good person, person with deen, person with akhlaq, a person who will preserve his daughter, because this person is really precious, right? So they don't accept anybody. Yeah, and if somebody came up and he's a normal individual that you don't even know about, you won't give him your daughter, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Leaves Amir al Mu'min with the task of bringing the Fawatim, Fatima bint Muhammad. Sallu alayhi. Sallu alayhi. Sallu alayhi. Sallu alayhi. Fatima bint Zubair and Fatima, the cousin of Ali, and Fatima bint Asad, the mother of Amir al Mu'min. Alayhi salam. So Rasulullah sends a letter to Amir al Mu'min telling him to bring the Fawatim to Medina. And the narration says that Rasulullah did not enter Medina before Amir al-Mu'mineen and the Fawatim came. And this is one thing that you might not find in certain movies when they broadcast or they basically show the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This part usually you might not find it. As if somebody is trying to hide history behind his back. Why? I mean Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam is is somebody that we all should honor, right? 
and is mafkhara the tarikh, mafkhara the insaniya. Amir al Umi is a jewel that every human being can be proud of and connect, connect to. This is why you see even Christians connect to Amir al Mu'min alayhi salatu salam. Not believers can connect to Imam Ali because he's the Imam of humanity. Nonetheless, so Rasulullah waited and he would not enter Medina until Amir al Mu'minin comes. The Imam salatu alayhi wa salam he had the fawatim with him along with Ayman, the daughter of the, the son of Um Ayman, who was martyred in the battle of uh, Hunayn. And he had Aba Waqid. Uh, Amir al Mumin alayhi salam, he paid off the loans of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. And if Rasulullah had made any promise to anybody, the Imam alayhi salam fulfilled the promise because that was also part of the instructions given to him by the Prophet. And now he came to Medina, he started the journey with those individuals. A group of believers wanted to also migrate. The Imam gave him the instructions of where to meet him at a certain place and how to follow. Nonetheless, the Imam on his way, the narration says Abu Waqid, he was the man who was basically directing the camels. Yasuq al Jimal, Yasuq al Rawah. And so, Kana Yasuq Sawqan Anifan. He was basically riding the camels in a fast way, in a brutal or not too gentle way. And Nidal Muni told him to be careful, be gentle, because the women, they're weak, so I have to be gentle with them. So he told him, I'm afraid that the enemy will capture us. Amir al Islam gave him the glad tidings that well, don't worry. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave me his word that they will not be able to do something for me, something that I dislike, such as, for example, killing me or taking back the fawaq. We're safe. As they're getting close to a location called Dajnan, at that moment, the enemies come. And there's seven knights along with the slave, along with the slave called Janah. They come, and Amir al Mu'min alayhi salam, in his group, they see them. So the Imam tells Ayman, and he tells Abu Waqid to stop the camels, to make them kneel down, and to tie them. He helps the women descend, and now he faces the enemy. They come to him. They tell him basically, did you think that you could escape? Did you think you could escape with these women? You have to return. Amir al Mun tells him, what if I don't? What are you going to do? What if I don't? They tell him that you're going to return by force, or we return your head. MashaAllah. Strong words. I'll get to who? To the line of God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, uh, they try to get to the animals, the camels, and to the women. The Imam alayhi salam blocks them. Janah tries to strike Amir al Mu'min alayhi salam with his sword. The Imam dodges the strike and strikes him back with a strike that starts with his shoulder and ends up where he keeps on cutting his flesh until it gets to the back of his horse. Then, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the Lion of God, now, he charges at the enemies. You see when the Lion charges at other animals, right? What happens to the animals? Well, let's run for your life, no? The Lion's coming. Amir al-Mu'mineen charged over there. And by the way, the Arabs, there was a common fact between them, that running away from any sword is a disgrace, unless it's the sword of Ali Ali then you can run away. It's okay. You have a green light. So the Imam charged towards the enemies, and so they told me, Abdul Abi Talib, please spare our lives. Stay away. So the Imam alayhi salam told them this beautiful statement of Ibn al Ummi. He told them, فَإِنِّي مُطَلِقٌ إِلَى ابْنِ عَمِّي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ I am going to follow my cousin, the Messenger of Allah, Biyatr. Biyatr was the name of Medina back then. فَمَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ أَفْرِيَ لَحْمَهُ وَأُهْرِيقَ دَمَهُ فَلْيَتْبَعْنِي أَوْ فَلْيَدْنُ مِنْ Anyone who wishes to have his flesh cut by my sword or his blood shed, let him follow me or come close to me. This was the word of Allah. He continued his journey. And they stopped at Bajnan. In Bajnan, he stayed there for a night and a day. For the remaining of the day and another night, put the fawatim and the mu'minin who were mustaqafin, who were weakened and deemed weak by the mushrikeen, 
these people. They came to Amir al-Mu'min in Mawr, and also Um Ayman called on that, in that location. Nonetheless, what did they do in that night? يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُهُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ The Quran says. They were mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were in ibadah and mentioning Allah when they're standing, when they're sitting, and when they are on their sides lying down. So complete dhikr of God subhanahu wa ta'ala, continuous dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at Fajr Amir al-Mu'in prayed, and then kept on going through his journey. Every location they stop, they will continue mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do the they do the care, and they worship Allah and they ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, they supplicate to Him, يَدْعُونَهُ يَرْغَبُونَ إِلَيْهِ And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended verses according to the narration, and the one I recited today is one of those verses. He descended a couple of verses in Surah Ali Amran that you find today. To Rasulullah, before they came to Him, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, until they got to the Prophet when they got there, Amir al-Mu'mineen's feet, the flesh of his feet was split because of the journey. And Rasulullah hugged his beloved Ali and he cried for what he'd seen, he'd seen from his feet. But a miracle happened on that day. What did Rasulullah do? He spit in his hands, were the hands of Ali, and those hands were rubbed on the feet of Amir al muminin and the pain was completely gone. Wow. So the pain was completely gone, and Amir al didn't feel any more pain in his feet. Now the verse said, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلُ مِنْكُمْ Verse 195 is Surah Ali Amran. If you read the first few verses before it, they're praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the verse here says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their dua and he answered back. What did he say? لَا أُضِعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلِ مِنْكُمْ Anyone who did deeds among you, whatever the deed is, I accept that deed. And that deed is preserved with me. By the way, we all have this kind of worry that sometimes you might lose something precious, right? Your money, for example, every time you check your wallet, your cell phone, your iPod, your iPhone, you check it because you like it, you don't want to lose it. So somebody might think that, okay, the amal I'm doing in this life, or the money I'm spending, like for example, if I pay salaka in this mosque, by the way, it's one of the best ways to get closer to God subhanahu wa ta'ala, because when you pay salaka, to this mosque or other mosques, Islamic centers, what are you doing? You're helping in the Islamic gatherings. You have, you're, you're basically, you're participating in that. You're one of the asbab, one of the causes for these gatherings of Buddha, of guidance, of Ahd al-Bayt salam Thus, will we see these deeds really on the Day of Judgment in the Akhirah? Somebody might say, I'm worried, what if I don't see it? Here you realize the Quran constantly comes to remind the human being that what? وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عَنْدَ اللَّهِ Any good you do in this world, you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing will be lost from God. How could it be lost from God? And is God stingy not to give you the deed, not to give you the reward? Ma'alallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only gives it to you, Allah multiplies. He gives you tafaddul, tafaddul alayk. He gives you more than what you deserve. Nonetheless. So فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُ أَنِّي لَا أُضِعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى Realize. We said Ali a.s. was with the Fawatim. Ali is what? بِأَبِي هُوَ أُمْنِ He's a male. Fawatim, females. Allah said, لَا أُضِعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى Whether you're a male or you're a female, it does not matter to me. Your deeds are accepted and this, this message is to both genders. بَعْضُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْضُ what does he mean when he says ba'dukum min ba'd? So some of you are part of the other. How does this work? One tafsir, you'll see it in tafsir al-amthal, ba'dukum min ba'd means that males come from females and females come from males. For example, everyone has a mom and dad except if, if he is Adam or Isa bin Maryam. Exclude them too. Okay? Isa has a mom. Nonetheless, 
You have a problem with that. If you're a male, it means you came from a female. If you're a female, you came from a male, you have a dad. Right? So you come from each other. Another tafsir says, meaning what? That you are all one group, under one banner. You're all under the banner of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And so what? So you all support him, you're all following his path, you're all under this group. This is why Bahadukum min Bahad. It's like you're one body, right? Nonetheless, here I want to focus, focus on what? Min dhakarin aw unta. Usually, this topic is brought up, and it's one of the most important topics, one of the most important social topics. Males and females, are they equal or are they not equal? And what is the point of view of Islam? Before we come to Islam's point of view, I'll, I'll just narrate for you a few facts, historical facts of how was, how were the, how did the males view females before? So we know the great na'mah, the great blessing that Allah has given us when He turned, He made us Muslims, and when He gave us the Quran. You'll see the great na'mah that we have tonight, inshallah, if you have not seen it before. What does how did the, the males used to see the females before? Women in the past, most nations used to believe that her deeds are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fair? So if you're a male and you're a female, you both, you both pray, you both fast. Because you're a male, your deeds are accepted. But she's a female. Us. So she's done. Her deeds are not accepted. That's right. In some parts of the world, I want to mention the name. She was considered as rish. What does rish mean? Impurity, as in najas. And she was considered to be man hamal shaitan from the deeds, from the actions of who? Of the beast, of the devil. By the way, rish sun man hamal shaitan. What does Allah subhanahu wa taala? Where do we hear this in the Quran? Al khamar, rish sun man hamal shaitan. Al khamar wal maisir. Khamar. Why? And gambling. Allah calls it Rishun and Amal al Shaytan Stay away from it. So the female used to be considered like this. In other parts of the world, they were doubting does she have a soul or not? The male has a soul, yes, because he's a male, mashallah, he's strong. The female, does she have a soul or not? They used to doubt. And some of them came to the conclusion that she is between a human and an animal. God. Islam came. Did it say females and males are equal? No, they're not equal. But in what perspective? If we're speaking about roles, the roles that Allah gives for males is different. Some are common and some are different. I mean, have you ever seen a male who gets pregnant? We don't see a male who gets pregnant. Females get pregnant. Pregnancy is for females, not for males. That's a biological role. For example, working outside your house, normally, and I know these days you can find vice versa, but normally, who is the person who works outside? When Ali and Fatima came to the Prophet in the narration and asked them, what are our duties? Did he tell Fatima, you are outside and Ali, you're inside? Or the opposite? He said the opposite. Fatima is inside the house because she's the wife of Allah and Ali is where? He's outside. This is also another role Allah gave Many things. Emotions. Who's more emotional? Males or females? Females, obviously. Right? This is part of her completion. So we can't say they're equal from that standard or from that uh, perspective. But now, the more important one. When we're talking about spiritual elevation, completion, accepting deeds, taqwa, are they equal? Yes, indeed, they're equal. Yes, indeed, they're equal. This is why Allah said, Min dhakarin aw unta, He did not separate between them at all. So now if somebody asks you who's better, the male or the female, what can we say? We can't say. You have to tell me which male you're talking about. If you're talking about Abu Lahab, and you're saying one of our Mu'mina sisters, they're better for sure. But if you're talking about Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Muhammad Khayrul 
Masha, no one's better than you. However, a female can elevate herself and gain a status that is higher than what thousands and millions and billions of men have gained. Tell me who? Probably no one talking about. Because her name is in your heart before my son. Fatima al Zahra, Allah. Sayyida to Nisa al Alameen, a female. But the kind of status that she has in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A status that is unimaginable. So she's a role model for all sisters. She's a role model that screams to people, Oh people, anyone can gain Qurb min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter what your gender is, it's what's in your soul. Thus you see Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu he says to one, of, to one of the narrators, he tells him Fatima has nine names in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nine names with God, Azza wa Jal. What are these nine names? Fatima, Siddiqa, al Mubaraka, al tahira al zakiya al radiya al mardiya al muhaddatha and al zahra and all of these names are secrets. That I'm Muhammad Ali Muhammad Salaam. All of these names are secrets that inshallah one day we can focus on. But the Imam, he wants to reveal a secret. He doesn't. Do you know what Fatima means? He doesn't know. What is it? He doesn't. Fatima means Shah. Fatima, what does Fatima mean? When a woman is, when a mother is breastfeeding her child, and then she stops, she wants to cut off the milk. We say Fatimat walada. So cutting off is Fatim. When he says Fatimat min al it means what? That there's no connection between evil and between Fatima. No evil at all. So no evil in thoughts, no evil in beliefs. Salah. Thoughts, no evil in beliefs, no evil in actions, no evil in in in, in anything, in intentions, which means that Fatima is what? Masuma Is there any doubt that she's Masuma anymore? Fatima min as And by the way, there's a great difference between somebody having a name in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having a name between us. What's the difference? If I have a baby boy or a baby girl, let's say it's a baby boy, and I call him generous, is it for sure he's going to be generous? He might grow up and turn out to be stingy, bakhir. I might call him Jaban. I might call him Jaban. Jaban, come here, Jaban, go there. Jaban meaning, means what? Means somebody who's a coward. But he might grow up to be a warrior about it, to be heroic. Why? Because I'm ignorant. I might make a mistake in what is the proper name for this individual. But Allah does not make mistakes. So when he says she's, her name is Fatima, her name is Batul, for example. Her name is Zahra, as we heard. Taban Batul was not one of the nine. Nonetheless, her name is Siddiqa. It means she truly is Fatima. She truly is Siddiqa. She truly is blessed, Mubarak. She truly is Muhaddatha. The angels speak to her, and so on. <coughs> then Imam al Sadiq reveals another secret. He says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not created, had not uh, married her to Amir al Mu'mineen. If Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, had not married Fatima, she would not have a kufr. She would not have anyone suitable for marriage. Between who, ya, ya Imam al Sadiq? What are you talking about? Between the Muslims? Yeah. He says, from the time of Adam till their judgment. Adam from Antuna. Which means what? Which means if Ibrahim, for example, was not the grandfather of Fatima, let's say he wasn't. Ibrahim would not be suitable to marry Fatima. Musa and Isa, they're, they're cousins of Fatima. They're not suitable to marry Fatima because she's high. But only Ali is suitable. What do you understand? That Fatima has reached such a status that even the likes of Adam, Ibrahim, Musa and Isa, with all respect to them, have not reached yet. She's reached such a status that Ali is suitable, which means as well that Ali is higher than those prophets. Ali. Thus, we realize what from the verse.
verse and from the example of Fatima from the example of Sayyidah Maryam, from the example of Asa bin Muzakim, that a female can reach high levels of completion. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of his wisdom, he prescribed the, rule, the, the rules that suit the female and the rules that suit the male in order to make what? To make order in the society. Thus, the males should not take the roles of the females if that role is specifically for them, and vice versa. The females should not try to take the roles of the males. Because what's happening sometimes, in marriages for example, this person is transgressing on the other party. The wife for example, she's doing injustice to her husband. She wants to be the boss. She wants him to listen to her, right? And if he doesn't listen to her, yeah, why you? And she's gonna do something big. That's wrong. At the same time, the male shouldn't transgress against the female. Sometimes husbands, because they're just a the husband, they think as, as if they're God's one. They can do anything in the house. I am the Lord of the house. Ajib, I'm a you know? Calm down. You're not the Lord of the house. See, you're the Lord of the house, but there's a Lord over you. There's a lost one. So if you think this female, she's weak, I can do whatever I want, remember, we're all weak in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you don't want Allah Azza wa Jal treating you with his justice. Not Dhulm, Allah does not Dhulm, with his justice on the internet. So, let's back away from these things. Now, one of the rules that Rasulullah mentioned, I'm not here to say these are all the rules. That takes lectures and maybe decades. However, one of the roles that Rasulullah mentioned for me females is what? He said, Jihad al Mar'ati, Husnul Taba. Listen to this. Jihad for me and you, other than Jihad al Akbar, which is struggling with oneself, Jihad al Asfar is what? Carrying a sword, a spear, in these days, weapons, modern weapons, and going to the battle with the Prophet or the Imam, right? He says, the female, the jihad for the female as well, is for her to be a good wife. So if you make good, good food for your husband, you're doing good in your jihad, right? The brothers will be happy today. If you are not disturbing your husband verbally, right? You try to make sure that when he comes home, he's in an atmosphere of relaxation, of ease, you're doing good jihad. You're good in your jihad. But if you make sure that life and you, you go against your husband, then you're failing in your jihad. That happens sometimes. Inshallah, our sisters are not like that. They're, they're good sisters. But sometimes that happens. The female tries to be what? She doesn't help her husband against life. She helps life against him. So she has to, if she wants to perform jihad to be successful, the Prophet says, to be a good wife. Now if we go to the land of Karbala, Karbala is a land for lessons for all Muslims. You see, Karbala was not made out of men, you know? Part one of Karbala, there's men and women. Part two, there's also men and women, but more women. Part two, what I mean by it is, part one is the journey of Imam Hussein to the Shahada. And part two is what? The journey of Zainab alayhi salam with Imam Zainab al-Abideen sallallahu alayhi Zainab al Kubra sallallahu alayhi wa a female, was given the role of what? Was given the role of protecting the women. Was given the role of speaking on behalf of her Imam. The Imam was the Sajjad sallallahu alayhi wa And this is one thing that Sayyidina Zainab taught us all. That in all cases, no matter how knowledgeable you are, you have to go back to who? To the Imam. This is why when the enemies came and burnt the tents, what did Zainab do? She didn't say, okay, you know what, let me think. Rukaya, Sukaina, Um Kultum, do this, that. What did she do? Zainab al Kubra. Zainab, the, the female that says, the Imam Sajak says about her, that she is what? Alima ghair mu'allama. She is knowledgeable without being taught, meaning Allah teaches her. Fahima ghair mufahmama. She understands without anyone explaining to her. Meaning she gets her fahim, her understanding from God. This individual comes to Imam Zainab. She doesn't want to be. So she teaches the Ummah. No matter how big you think you are, no matter, inshallah, you wear a this big, this big. You have to go back to the Imam at the time. The Imam is, is the master. This individual carries what? Carries a huge burden on her shoulders. She's a female. 
We look at the mother of Amr ibn Junada. Amr ibn Junada is a little boy. His father Junada al Ansari rahimahullah was one of the companions of Imam Hussein who died when the first part of the battle took place. Because when the first, when Karbala started, when the battle started, the companions, about 40 of them or 50, they charged once. Junada was one of them and he was killed. Now this mother, who's playing the role of a female, but she wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I wish my sisters listen to this carefully, because this teaches us one of the greatest roles a female can have in society, which is what? Which is to be a good mother and a good wife. A mother who raises children to be ulama scholars. A mother who raises children to be mu'mineen, sadiqeen, truthful. People with certainty. People who will spread truth, spread justice, spread the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhum all of that work that your son or your daughter will be doing, you will be their sharif, their associate, because you raised them that way. This is for the females and also for the males. If you as a father raise your sons that way, and one of your sons, for example, becomes a big alim, who writes multiple books, and he benefits humanity, you are sharif in that ajab, because you are his essence. And the asli. Right? So this is one of the ways how a female could get closer to Allah by her marriage, and by her offspring. This lady comes with her son, Amr, and she wants him to go to the battlefield. She gives him a sword. But the sword is, it's, it's a young boy. She puts the sword on him. There's a rope that holds the sword. She makes sure to tie the rope so that the, sword does, that the rope doesn't look too big on him. She prepares him, and that boy goes to ask Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, for what? He goes to ask him for shahada, that he wants to go and fight. Imam Hussain, out of his mercy, he says this boy, his father was killed in Hamlet al-Ula, with the companions in the first part of the Karbala. And so maybe his mother does not like, she's displeased, she does not want him to go and fight. The boy tells him, Inna ummi, my mother, she's the one that sent him. He gets permission by Abba Abdullah. He goes out. But now, how does he tell the people who he is? He doesn't say, I am Amr ibn Junada. He says these lines of poetry that are unbelievable lines. Lines as if he's speaking from the heart of every Shia. He says, Ameeri Husaynun wa Na'man Ameer. Sururu Fuad al Bashir al Nadir. Aliyun wa Fatimatun walida. Fahal ta'alamuna lahum. له طلعة مثل شمس الضحى له غرة مثل بدر الدين. He says my commander is Hussein and what a beautiful commander he is. ونعم الأمير. سرور فؤاد البشير النذير. He is the one that enters happiness from the heart of who? The warrior meaning Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. علي and فاطمة are his parents. Do you see anyone like him? Is there anyone in humanity like Hussein صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ This Christian lady, Um Wahab, we have Um Wahab, Wahab and his wife. They're a Christian family. And by the blessings of Imam Hussain, they turn Muslim and they follow the caravan of Aba Abdullah. On the day of Shahada, Um Wahab, she wants to give her son for Imam Hussain. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is what happens when a person melts in the love of Imam Hussain. You probably heard what Abbas did on day of Ashura, when Abbas took off his armor and the enemies told him, Ya Abbas, what are you doing? Ajunin, have you become mad, crazy? What does he tell him? He says, The love of Hussein has turned me crazy. Now, the love of Hussein is what it does to a person. By the way, the Christian says what? It says the companions of Imam, Imam Hussain salam, on that day, they did not feel the pain when they were fighting. How does that make sense? Spears, swords. You don't feel the pain? How could it be? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you an example. Where do we see people 
cutting their hands in the Quran, but they don't feel the pain. The women who were viewing Yusuf, when they saw the beauty of Yusuf, that beauty captured them. So they were cutting the flesh, but they didn't feel it. These people did not see Yusuf with all respect to Yusuf. They saw the Imam of Yusuf. These people connected to Aba Abdullah so he energized them and they all melted in his box. Um Wahab, she wants to send her son to do what? For Shahada. The wife, she was not too pleased with that. She's a new one and she wants to preserve her husband. So she, she attaches herself to him. Um Wahab tells him, go. He goes, he fights. He comes back. He tells her, are you pleased, my mother? She says, no. Until you get killed, I won't be pleased. Until you get killed, Wahab goes and he fights until he's This is another one. So we see these examples in Karbala. You see examples of the daughters of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu salam, right? Which are a role model for all of our daughters. You see, you can see an old woman in Karbala, a young woman in Karbala, and even a little girl in Karbala, which teaches us what? That when it comes to Islam, in education and being a role model to others, age does not matter. So our daughters, we should raise them in a way that not once they're 80 years old, they become role models. They become role models from the beginning. If you're a female who's in her 20s, her 30s, also you can play a great role in society. And by the way, we're in need of a lot of females, a lot of females, to be scholars, to be writers, a lot of females too, to help Islam. Just like Ahl al-Bayt, when Imam Hussein went, he took the women with him. The women were part of his journey. Same thing today, in defending Islam, it's not only upon <coughs> the males. The females play a large part in this. Because if we talk in number, who's more? Females are more in number than they outnumber the men. They outnumber the males. So they're the large part, the larger part of the society. Therefore, we need to focus on it. Now, it's a lot of people that. So, from all these examples, we can see what? We can see how females participate in Karbala, right? During Ashura, after the day of Ashura, and they had a crucial role. Thus, each female in Islamic society. Each female in the Shia Madhab, right, should intend that I want to play some role today in showing the true face of Islam. I want to play some role today in uh, propagating the truth, in spreading justice, in showing humanity what kind of a religion do we have when Islam puts males and females on the same, on the same path, puts them on the same level, and says, Inna akramakum the most honorable of you in the eyes of Allah is who, the one who has more piety, whether male or female. However, although we've heard about these different females, there is one female who had a very important role in Karbala, but she was not present that day in Karbala. Her heart was with Aba Abdullah. She made sure to raise her sons in a way that they would be the warriors in the battlefield and they would give their souls for Imam Hussein alayhi The mother of Abu Fawl al-Abbas, the mother of Abdullah Jafar al-Uthman, Umm al-Baneen, salawatu Allahi wa salam This special woman, special individual, tonight insha'Allah, we will touch upon one of her tragedies. But before we go to Umm al-Baneen, salamu Allahi alayha, tonight as well, we can be uh, the brothers commemorate Habib bin Mullah Habib who is one of the close companions of Aba Abdullah and he has a special position in Imam Hussein's heart Habib you can see his special position where in his grave when Imam Zain al-Abideen he says to Bani Asad as you will hear inshallah in Laylat al dafin that uh, Dig a grave for me, and he puts the companions of Imam Hussein in that grave. 
except in who Habib. Habib has his own grave, which means this person's status is unimaginable. And there's also Hor for other for because his tribe put him away, he was very further away. Nonetheless, Habib bin Mudahid was a faqih, was a knowledgeable person, and a person who was from the companions of Rasulullah and Imam Ali alayhi salam and Imam al Hassan. So a person who was loyal to Ahlul Bayt He's sitting home eating with his wife and he gets a letter by Imam al Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It's a special invitation to come and support him. Habib is eating. He hears that there's a message from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He gets off the food. He goes and sees the letter and he reads it. Imam al Hussein is asking him to come and support him. Habib puts the letter on his eyes. He loves that letter. <laughs> but he tells his wife that what should I do? And the wife, what does she do? She plays that important role where she tells him to support the son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Nonetheless, what had, what had happened is that Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, he besieged Kufa. He made sure that there are soldiers that are preventing people from leaving Kufa and helping Imam Hussein and supporting him. So he had to leave in a secret way. He sent his slave with his horse and he made him leave Kufa. And since he's a slave, the soldiers won't care. And he told him to wait for him in a special place. Habib was coming. The slave is waiting. And Habib is late. Here the slave speaks to the horse. What does he tell He says, if your master, if your possessor does not come, I am going to go and support Allah. Right so Habib hears this. He's shocked. He says, that subhanAllah, the slave Aba Abdullah, the free men want to support you, and the slaves as well want to support you. He goes, and he arrives at Karbala. When Aba Abdullah had 12 flags, they say. Come on, the main flag was in the hands of Abu al-Fadl He had 12 flags. One of them, he did not give it to anyone. Some of his companions requested the Imam, please give it to me. Then you have the honor. The Imam said, the person who will, bid, who will uh, hold this flag, he has not come yet. He's coming. As they're speaking, dust rises. And Habib has come to support the Imam. Habib comes. When he gets close to Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa he gets off his horse and he comes and he kisses the ground in front of Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gives his salam to Aba Abdullah, the Abi who are going to the companions, they reply with salam. Zainab hears that somebody has come. So Zainab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she asks, Man hadha alladhi akbar? Who is that person who has just come? So they tell her that Habib ibn Mudahir has come. When she hears that Habib ibn Mudahir has come to Karbala, Zainab says, Ibra'uhu anni salam. Give him my salam. Allahu Akbar, what is the status of Habib? <laughs> that Zainab bint Ali sends her salam to Habib bin Mudahir. When they give him the salam, what does Habib do? He slaps his face, Latama Mashallah. And he puts sand on his head as a sign of grief. He said, Waman Akun, Hatta to Salim Alayya bin to Amir al Mu'mineen. Who am I? So that the daughter of Amir al Mu'mineen gives her salam to me. And I'm an Zainab alayhi salam, the daughter 
daughter of Amir al Mu'mineen, the protector, she gives me her salam. This is the honorable Zainab. This is the jewel of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. This is the daughter, this is the female that the Quran mentions. The Quran speaks about Ahd al-Bayt and their rights. Oh Allah,
they beheaded him. What happened to Imam Al Hussein? The narration says, "Hadda Masra Al Hussein." Naam Imam Al Hussein was devastated from the killing of Habib bin Mudahir. He said, "And Allah, I hesib nafsi wa humat ashabi." Naam Aba Abdullah was devastated for Habib, but there is only one man we hear when he was martyred. Aba Abdullah put his hand on his back. He put his hand on his side. He said, Now my back has been broken. What? When Abu Fadl Abbas was killed. Yeah, Abu Fadl, he has a special knife. There's a special knife for Abu Fadl Abbas. But let us go to Umm al Banin in Medina. Umm al Banin who sacrificed Abbas, Abdullah, Jafar, and Uthman, all for Imam al Hussein, Salawatullah. When Bishr bin Hadlam entered Medina, Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam did not want to enter Medina while the people are just silent. He wanted everyone to be aware of the tragedy. So he sent Bishr bin Hadlam to inform them of the killing of the Imam. When he informed them, a great uproar was heard in Medina. Bishr himself says, he says, I've never seen people crying more than that day. I've never seen a day more bitter than the up upon the Muslims from that day. One of the women who came out was Umm al-Baneen, salamullahi alayha. She has one worry. She wants to ask him about Abba Abdullah. She came asking him, tell me about Hussein. What is the state of Abba Abdullah? Bishr. They told him, Bishr, the people told him, be careful, be gentle with her. This is Umm al-Baneen. She lost four of her boys. So Bishr, he said to her, May Allah greatly reward you with the loss of Ja'far. I did not ask you about Ja'far. She said to him, Akhbirni an walad al-Husayn. Tell me about my son Hussein. Bishr said to him, Abdam Allah, Lakil Aj, Bi waladiki Abdullah. May Allah greatly reward you for the loss of Abdullah. Who mentioned Abdullah? She said to him, Akhbirni an walad al-Husayn. Tell me about my son Hussein. He said, "Abdam Allah, lakin ajr bi waladik Uthman." May Allah greatly reward you with the loss of Uthman. She said, "Ya Bunay, akhbarni an walad al Hussein, my son." Tell me about my son Hussein. Here he told her something that breaks all of our hearts. What did he say to her? He said, "Allah Allah, nakil ajr bi waladik abid fadl al Abbas." May Allah bring you reward you with the loss of Abu Fadl al Abbas. Abu Bakr could not take it anymore. She put her hand on her heart. The son of Abu Fadl was on her shoulders. He fell down. Umm al-Baneen sallallahu alayhi wa she said to him, Ya ibn Hadlan, Lakar qatta'atan ya ta qalbi. O son of Hadlan, you have killed me, you have cut my heart. Akhbartani bi qatli awlaat al-arba'a. You have to inform me of the killing of my four boys. Walakin ya ibn Hadlan, I want you to know something. My four boys and everyone under the sky is a sacrifice for Abba Abdullah. Ya Ibn Hadlam, akhbirni an walad al-Husayn. 
son of Adam, O oh, son of Adam, tell me about my son Hussein. He said to her at that moment, Ya Umm al Subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of Sahib al-Asli was demand. 
to make us from his true companions and supporters. During the Laiba the Muhu. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. To accept this judgment from us. And to accept our deeds. And to make us all from the people who are on the ship of Imam al Hussein. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us sincere, mukhlasin. And to keep us away from the haram. Keep us away from the shaitan. Keep us away from the enemies of Islam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all the meaning of Muminan, especially the shrines of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam, and we do two special du'as tonight. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabbit qalbi ala deen. This one is the du'a of Amir al-Muminan alayhi wa salam. Ilah, kafa bi azzan in hakuna laka abda, wa kafa bi fakhran in hakuna li rabba, anta kama rahib, kash'alni kama rahib. You are like I like, so make me the way you are. أنت كما أحب فجعلني كما أحب. We recite the ayah. Anyone has a haja? Please ask at the moment. Allah أمر بحق يوم البنين. باب الحوائج إليك. اقضي حاجة كل محتاج. يا الله. أما يجيب الغضب لا تعا ويكشف السوء.